So, just in terms of our panel members, as I say, we presently have five. We have Andy, um, who many of you may recognise as the retired principal of Ashley Boys School, a very keen activist around educational underattainment and achievement within any young people, especially within the PDL community. <coughs> then we also have Maggie, that I can call Kathy on my so I call me for this year. We have Maggie, um, who's been involved in community activity and activism for the last 15 years. Maggie's been involved in anything from issues around the interface, through to flags issues, and also the important voices of young people and others in community politics. Then we have Ian. Tom <laughs> And Sharon. Um, Ian's from the Braniel and has been a work community and voluntary worker there for 10 years. Very passionate about the activities of communities, really concerned about the lack of engagement by people, local people in politics, and really sees the voices of people as being a very important part of the political structures going forward. Then we have Carr, who is the chairperson of the Traders Association locally, and again believes very passionately in the need for people to be involved in local politics and help it kind of shape the change that's required for a community like this. Then finally down the bottom we'll have our China, um, John, that I've met tonight for the first time, who is um, a local businessman for many years and has represented the bands this evening, um, is the chairperson of the East Belfast Protestant Boys. So you can see the range of perspectives that we have here this evening. And as I say, we're looking for one more panel member to hopefully come along sometime soon. So bear with us on that one. Um, we're going to kick off with Ian. Um, we need you to speak into the microphone. I think, I hope it works. Um, and if not, we'll have to shout. Thanks for listening. <coughs> Good evening all. Uh, my name is Ian Shanks. Um, I've lived in the Brownhill for 40 years. I've been involved in the community um, supporting for 10 of them years. Uh, last year I stood for the Progressive Unionist Party in the Wollaston Ward, in Ireland this week. Um, I think like most in the room, I'm kind of quite amazed by the selection of the election candidates for this coming West Minister election. And at a loss in who to vote, or how to vote, or who to vote for. Um, so tonight, hopefully we'll have, we're not here to, you know, tell people how to vote and who to vote for, but hopefully whoever does get voted in, we'll be the voice to keep them, um, to make sure that they work for people like us and we have a voice for them. Okay. Thank you. Maggie? Good evening. Um, I'm Maggie Lee. I'm from I've lived on the Lord Newton North Road for a good part of 40 years. Um, I worked for a local MLA, but that doesn't mean I have any um, allegiance to the party. Um, I'm not a party voter. I'll vote for the person who basically does the work on the ground um, and who can really get back to the community in which I come from. Um, for too long now, um, the community in grassroots working class areas have been forgotten. Um, well, should I say part of them have been forgotten. Some do reap. Um, because they jump or dance to the tune that some people may play. Um, but unfortunately, some of us can't and won't do that. Um, basically, what I, I'm, I'm the same view of Ian. I mean, this election has gobsmacked me, particularly after the success of the Ulster Unionist Party in East Belfast um, and the council elections, where Gavin Robinson basically was put in his place, and an Ulster Unionist may I say also a female popped the poll. Um, so for Mike Nesbitt and Mr. Robinson to make packs on the back of a working class vote, I just feel that it's it's, it's just not it's not viable. And he should have consulted. There should have been consultation with the people sitting around this room tonight. Um, everyone in here has a voice, and unfortunately, there's po political parties out there that don't want to listen. And it's up to us to make them listen. And whether it be Naomi Long, Gavin Robinson, or another that win this seat in East Belfast, it's up to us, the people in this room, to hold their feet to the fire and make them accountable. Hello, my name is Carl Bell, chairman of Newton Arch Road Minerals Traders Association. I've also worked um, with many of the other panel members here tonight, and many of you in the audience on the ground over, over recent years. Um, I echo a lot of what's been said already. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate the organisers of the event tonight for bringing it together. And it is um, poor that none of the 
upcoming um, representatives or a candidate. I could not just put a face for five or ten minutes in the room tonight to actually hear uh, what matters to the people on the ground. Uh, I think it's a very clear show of exactly what they think of us and our areas. And when you look along that Eaton Orge Road, where some of the older ones tonight, all of them, uh, <laughs> some of the older ones tonight would have walked up and down that Eaton Orge Road one side and back down the other and took a while. It's now a site of dereliction, deprivation, and that's not just the units and the shop units, but it's the area around it as well. And that's a clear shun by the politicians who have led, uh, not only at Westminster, but also in the Assembly uh, of our areas. This is an opportunity for us, with the United Voice, to go forward, to hold whoever gets elected to account, not only at Westminster, but the Assembly next year. I hope this is the first of many events to give us that opportunity. Um, we must do it, we must unite to do it, um, and I believe we can together uh, build a better future, not just for us, but for our kids and our grandkids. But unfortunately, today, it's only us that can do that. Um, and we have the people, not only on the panel tonight, but the people sitting in the audience, the people behind the scenes, that can do it as well. <coughs> Hello, my name is John Keenan. I would say I know nearly everybody here in the audience, a local businessman. I've been back at East Belfast Crossing Boys for nearly 45 years. I'm also a founding member of the 36 Bonds Association. I try to speak for all bonds at all times. Also, like Carl, I'm worried about the decline on the new North Road, the effect it has on our people. But call myself pro unionist, but not a unionist, as it wouldn't be official unionist, it wouldn't be AUP. The biggest regret in politics would be that I voted yes to the Good Friday Agreement. And like many of men I sit in this room, I would say I regret that. I also take a very strong view that both the Union and Main Street parties in East Belfast have taken this community too long for granted. They expect a lot from, the, from our people to give very little back. They do very little work on the ground, they do nothing for bonds, they take Protestant people for granted, and that includes official unionists on the DUP, who have put us in a corner but, uh, this time around. From a bond perspective, uh, the bonds are always on the front line of any public disorder. They're sometimes seen as a, a scapegoat to blame, but the uh, those days, I, I would say, are changing fast, but they're not being super broad that people are learning to speak back and speak up. And even though the next year, I would say, most of the people in this room, I would know, you have all got a voice. All you have to do is let it be heard. And it's, there's more voice in this East, East this City than the DUP and the advice of the Unis. Thank you. the principal of High School Boys High School and when I was appointed I was called two things. First of all called a blow-in and the second thing I was called was a middle class prat. Now if I go to the blow-in first of all. Are you one of us sir? Thanks very much. <laughs> I found out about the last year I was in the school. I was actually born in a place called Johnson House which thank God is just across the bridge so it wasn't a blow-in. I was actually born in East Belfast long before many of you. The middle class <coughs> prat club always hurt me. My daddy was a barman in the, in the buff club the Shankle Road and my mum was at home help because she cleaned houses on the Shankle Road. So when I took over as principal, I took that in with me. That's the first thing. I have to declare that I'm now serving an education authority, which as you know there were five 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 education library boards and now there's one. And I'm serving in that as a representative of the Ulster Unionist Party. I am a non party member, so I'm starting to panic when I heard you having to go at the unionist there. I am a non party member. But why am I there? I'm there because of the underachievement issues. Uh, I'll not use the word. When I walked into the ice field the first day, I asked two boys, excuse me, could you tell me where the headmaster's office is? And the boy turned and told me to F off. I nearly dropped. I home that night I said to my wife, I made a mistake here. This is not what I thought it was. And she said, why? I said, what do you mean? She says, why did the kid tell you to F off? So I sat down and thought about it. And the reason the kid told me to F off was at that stage, there was two groups in the school. There was us and them. The, as far as kids were concerned, the us was the kids and the them was the staff. 
I worked in that and moved out 12 teachers, smiled at them as they took their early retirement, and swore to my God I would never let them set foot in the school again. Because as far as they were concerned, these were wee boys from D Street, and they're causing them trouble, so you put your foot in their throat, and if it causes you any more trouble, you increase the pressure. So as you all know, if you've got a dog, and you kick it enough times, it's eventually going to bite you. So that's the reason that, I, that, that the whole thing in my school went off. Talk about underachievement, there's two main issues. Number one, preschool. Everything that happens later on is determined by what happens in preschool. And it is not a one organization solution. There's a massive thing, and I know there's reduction in numbers in preschool in the East Belfast area, especially when you get kids who have been offered places in schools that quite honestly could go to. The second one is to do with youth and what they get out of it. Now, I'll do that very quick and then I'll shut up. There are 20% less places in university, which means those people who don't get in go to the techs. There's therefore 20% less places in the tech, so those people that don't get into the tech, what are they going to do? There are training organizations in East Belfast who have done a great job, but they've done it in an, indiv an individual thing, and there's no joined up thinking. I know the present principal actually would like to keep more boys in school, not necessarily in a school uniform, not necessarily in a, uh, a 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock situation, so that he can keep them in there until this austerity thing is over. Because the more education they have now, which means when it is over, and it will be over at some stage, they will have qualifications to carry with them, and that leads to one thing. It's called the job. Thank you. Ladies and gents, uh, apologies for being here. Um, just finish a uh, production meeting now, trying to secure a few more jobs for East Belfast over the next six or seven weeks on uh, the finishing of the rig. Um, Pretty successful, so we should have about another 50 places to go to our um, um, Obviously, my background a, a student Victoria Award here a, a way back, and I've been involved with uh, local community issues um, and, and also like the Titanic Festival, George Best Cup, and the like. Um, and again, just hopefully, some of the things we, things we can raise here. Um, will be taken forward and we can lobby properly um, for some of the issues that, that are, are uh, important to us all. sort of like uh, pretty close. I mean, but, uh, but Eastern Europeans are um, under attack, and there was a great public response to it, uh, and rightly so. You know, why, why shouldn't it be? Everybody's here, and, and, and they should live in peace, and they should be able to do various things. Well, something that's really important to me is that if you take the interface areas, and you take Clue Place, and you take Lower Newton Arts Road, and you take Duke Street, and you take Madrid Street, you know, it's nearly like, you know, you have a nightly attack down there. I mean, just drive down the road. What do you do? You drive by every single day of life. But do you still notice the cages on the windows? I don't think you do. You know, because it takes you nine to look for it and see the cages still on the windows there. So, you know, we're, we're going to have the upcry and the furor over, you know, Eastern Europeans being attacked. And again, really so. But what, what we've sort of way forgot is the promises of the Good Friday Agreement and the St Andrews and the Belfast Agreement, and all the other agreements that we've had, is that for the party that, you know, the Protestant, loyalist, working class people 
were meant to get out of all these new agreements. And all you have to do is look at the cages that people are still living behind to see that that hasn't followed through. So that's one. How these fake communities' voices could be heard to be more effective? I think you kind of need to get more into politics as well. Say a little bit more about that, Just, you know, the people that, the people that get voted in don't, that we've been, I mean, I've been one that's been told who to vote for over the years, and it doesn't work. You get this day that you kind of do the work and you go, where's these, how, where's the politicians that we go in? Where's the help? There's no help from, you know, I look about here and there's a few people from my community association and they'll tell you by one hand how many people have actually been at, how many representative politicians have been at meetings. They may not give you a hand of anything, you know, they're not there to kind of give you help with, you know, funding applications for kids, for football and, and things like that. They're just not there. They need to be held accountable more. Um, one of the problems I think in our side is that, you know, if you go to your side, you're not scared of the past. We need to see past that and, and be able and be comfortable to be able to create and vote for people that has a past. Okay, thank you. Just coming in sort of on the back of what you have said, I mean, the national community aren't discouraged to vote for um, what they want. I find the unions community or a community, it's we'll vote for what we don't want. You know, we'll vote for people because we don't want this or we don't want that one. You know, we need to be voting for the people who are delivering on the ground. Mm -hmm. And no matter who that is, um, that person or that party have to be held the account. Whether it be it's things like this where, I mean, you said tonight, Louise, at the start, there was politicians invited, particularly Naomi Law and Gavin Robertson, and both turned it down. But this, is this not the sort of thing, instead of behind closed doors, where there's private invites, they should be coming and listening to the people who basically the likes of welfare reform is going to affect and um, people who basically are living in houses that are full of dump. You know, these are the people that they need to be listening to. These are the people who basically are giving them as their healthy lifestyle and paying for their holidays and paying with their kids to education. You know, it's time to hold them the account. And I think more things like this where basically the working class community can come together with the united voice. You know, there, there are breaks in the working class community, but basically that's there simply because it suits the DUP. The DUP can throw money at people, it suits them. But thankfully, there's people within our community who can't be bought. But those people need to stand up and be counted now because if we don't, we're going to be has beens. And this is the time. We all need to be united and move forward as a community. cell in my body, never has been and never will be, so what I'm about to say has got nothing to do with politics. Any one of you out there that has a job, when you get that job, you're given a job description, and if you do not meet that job description, you will lose your job. Now, the election that's coming up is gone, so I sat here last week in that uh, talkback program, and I sat on the view and listened to I think it was five the first day and four the second. I don't care what party they're from, whatever they were doing, but it was it was saber rattling because the election is coming up, right? So it's really strange that the saber saber rattling goes on when there is an election. Now this election is gone, but the next election is a completely different one because it is a local government. And what you just talked about earlier about you know the community involvement and people have a have to have a say. If you have a job description for a politician and they don't meet it, there should be a situation whereby something is not about it. Because in any other job, that's what would happen. There is no accountability in Northern Ireland politics for anybody, which is why I stay out of politics. If you're in it, that's fine. I'm not going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to dispute that with you. But if they're saying that they're going to, I know at the moment there's a big thing about welfare, but that's, let's be honest, that's the national, that's heading towards London. I would be more worried about what's happening on the ground in East Belfast when it comes to these local elections. There are promises that have to be not only made, they have to be kept. Because if they're not kept, what comes next 
is the problem that I talked about when I said there was a reduction in places. You at the moment have got, it's unfortunate that the percentage of 18 year olds who are voting is 23. 23% because the rest of them, either they don't care or they don't want this or they don't do it. That, that, that's the issue. And the bottom line is, if you can increase that, depending on the people that you put forward who are suggesting to them, we will give you this in the future on a local level, you will therefore get more than voting. Because as I said last week, some of these guys, you need to get them with a voting paper in their hand and not a brick. Because once you get more kids on the street with bricks, then you get this thing about East Belfast. Now, I have one other thing to say. My background is the Shankill Road. I taught for 19 years in the boys' model school. When I took over as principal, I speak, all I listened to were group one schools getting uh, 250,000 extra per year. Then I heard full service goods getting 250,000 per year extra. So when I asked the question at the Belfast Education Library Board, which now, thank God, has gone, and the question I asked, every one of the Group 1 schools and every one of the full service schools was in West and North Belfast. And you know what the reason was at that time? Because that's where all the street trouble was. So I made the point, what do you want to do? You want all the kids in East Belfast to read? They do that, you'll get more money. And unfortunately, at that time, that was, a re that was realistic. I'm not asking people to read on the street, no bricks. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But all of a sudden now, you know, what you've got now, when you talk about East Belfast, people look at East Belfast and think of, oh, they've got a big, strong middle class, or there's a lot of money in East Belfast, there's so much money, that's why there's so much drug, much drugs about, etc., etc. But that's not the case. That's not the case, because I dealt with the working class kids in East Belfast at Cambridge Ashford, and they were beaten when they walked through the door. They weren't beaten when they left it, but that's a different ballgame. That's not what you're <laughs>